Okay, welcome to video 21, subnetting 21. And we're going to do a problem in the second octet, a problem in the second octet. So we have already developed this. And again, remember that these two rows are repeated down here for purposes of the increment or the value. And then the subnet mask repeats itself over and over in every one of these uh, different charts here. So uh, if we're working in one of these columns down here, just pretend that there's the, these two rows also uh, belong to that column. But this just makes writing it easier. So let's look at our problem. We have a network 10.0.0.0 with a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. We want to break it up into 64 networks using the largest possible number of hosts per network. Again, we know that we're working in the in the uh, second octet here because of this 255 here. We know that only the first octet is the uh, is part of the network. So I'm going to put the subnet mask here in ones and zeros. And notice that if we are going to continue contiguous ones, we would have to put it here in the second octet next. So I'm going to be dealing here. All right, let's see what this looks like. We know that we're going to need four subnets. Let's put our, let's just number our subnets, one, two, three, and four. This column, again, sometimes I don't put this column. Uh, unless I need it for some types of questions, like, you know, what's the first uh, first host address, first usable host address on the 16th subnet, and so on. Sometimes you get that, and you need to do this. But typically, I don't uh, put it here. But I do start here with the network address. 10.0.0.0 is our network address. Now, I need to know my increments next. The second thing I do is I create my increments. So let's do that. I, I know that uh, this is my starting address. And I know, what do I know here? 64 subnets. Aha. I'm going to start. If I borrowed one from the second octet, I could make two subnets. If I borrowed two, I could make four subnets. So that's down here in the second octet. Two. I could use, make two if I borrowed from the first one. I can make four if I borrowed from this, eight, 16, 32, 64. Aha, I can get 64 subnets by using this. So let's go ahead and shade that just so we can kind of keep track. And just as I've done in the past, I'm going to go ahead and put some arrows in here uh, just to kind of you know, keep track of, of what we're doing, and which one we're in. So I'm going to deal specifically with this um, this column, and I'm dealing entirely in the second octet. All right, what do we know then about increments? Well, I don't have increments here, but I do have increments up here, right? Four, an increment of four. And again, remember, even though I didn't repeat this four down here, uh, this is still a valid number for this. So I'm dealing with the second octet. So I'm going to increment by 4 in the second octet. So let's increment by 4 in the second octet. 10.4, because this is the second octet, dot zero dot zero. 10.8.0.0. I'm still incrementing by 4 in the second octet. 10.12.0.0. Be careful not to say 16. Don't just keep doubling here. We're only adding 4 each time. We're not doubling it to six from 8 to 16. You get so used to doubling, sometimes it's easy to forget these things. I'm going to do one more just for bookkeeping purposes. Uh, 10. Dot uh, 16.0.0 .0 .0 would be the next one, but again, that's just for uh, bookkeeping so that I can get this broadcast address here. All right, let's look at our first addresses. 10.0.0.1, 10.4.0.1, 10 10 10.8.0.1. These are all the first addresses on uh, these networks, right? The dot one would be the next the first address 10.12.0.1 10.13.0.1 10.14.0.1 10.15.0.1 10.16.0.1 10.17.0.1 10.18.0.1 10.19.0.1 10.20.0.1 10.21.0.1 10.22.0.1 10.23.
and now I can start on the broadcast addresses. Well, I have this one, and what's one before 10.16? You sure, that would be 10.15.255.255. And here, what's one before 10.12? Well, that would be 10.11.255.255. One before 10.800 would be 10.7.255.255, and one before 10.400 would be 10.3.255.255. Now I can do my last address. 10.3.255.254 would be one IP address earlier than that. 10.7. From over here, I can get 10.11.255.254. And from over here, I can go one less and get 10.15, whoops, 10.15.255.254. All I need now is my subnet mask or CIDR notation. And if I want CIDR, I've got it right here. I can do it to slash 14. That makes it easy. Uh, but if I want to translate that, I can look up here at the subnet mask and see, well, that's 252 and I'm working in the second octet. So 255.252.0.0. Whoops, 255.252.0.0. Sometimes my brain goes faster than my fingers. Uh, 255.252.0.0. There we go. Uh, I could do 14s or I could do these. It doesn't matter. These mean exactly the same thing. This just translates back and forth. I don't need this anymore. That was just to uh, uh, so I can get this broadcast address. And I have solved this problem. Now in the next video, in video 22, what we're going to be doing, excuse me, video 22, we're going to be looking at a second octet but where we actually at one point have to cross over into the third octet. So we'll see you in that video, and that'll be the last one in the series for this week, and then uh, next week we'll add uh, a couple more videos. So we'll see you in video 22.